so you'll have the electrons will will hop down and the holes will will hop up Holes. Hmm. light come light coming in and kind of jumping down into the the antenna would act as a funnel so the solar funnel operates the, the same way you would think a regular funnel would, would, would work if you were to bring it outside in, in the rain. In fact, that's a very, very good analogy. You know, if you think of rain dro droplets like, like photons, you know, small, small pa packets of light, then what the funnel actually does is it, it concentrates these fo photons down in space and concentrates them down to, to a small spot. And if you, had a, if you have a photovoltaic or a photo de detector there, then you, you can greatly enhance the, the performance of this device. By using this laser, we can see the forces coming from this fiber. The sunlight excites the nanotubes that are in the outer layer of the fiber and because of the different properties that make up the nanotubes in the different layers, um, the light is being funneled to the core of our construction of the fiber. And that's where it's emitted at a wavelength that is specific to the nanotubes in the core of the fiber. So basically we've spatially and energetically focused the light. Another work that just got published was so once we noticed that the fiber fluoresced and that it gave light, as you see here on this image, we analyzed the wavelengths of this light and the intensities uh, with the computer and compiled all the data in the plot that you see here. Uh, fluorescence coming from the smallest band gap uh, nanotube. When the energy travels from one type of nanotube to the other type of nanotube, it loses a bit of its energy, right? This bit of energy is determined by the difference in band gap between the two types of nanotubes. If you choose two types of nanotubes which have a band gap that is pretty much the same, but one is a little lower than the other, then the energy lost in the transition will be minimalized. So we could improve our invention by choosing two types of nanotubes that are more closely related property-wise. Instead of having the entire roof be covered with, say, a brittle piece of silicon photovoltaic, or uh, you could then start to, start to think about having a much smaller array of devices maybe embedded into plastic and then using the solar concentrator to make up for the the decrease in area that you would that you would find so this this tool can help engineers to make uh, more robust photovoltaic te technology you, you could uh, you know, kind of assemble these on, on top and um, and then you you can measure the gain in efficiency and this would just oh, over the surface kind of at the, at the millimeter level and uh, maybe at, at the level to where you wouldn't really de detect it by your eye. So a final product in the marketplace may, may look like, uh, in, in, instead of the flat, shiny panels that you're used to seeing on top of a roof or, or, or in a sol solar array, uh, you may see a material that, that looks some, somewhat rougher, um, but has, if you, if you looked under, under a microscope, uh, you would see small antenna structures on top of these electronic de devices. And this, um, if, if you calculate Cor correctly, this device could could have comparable or even better efficiencies than some of some of the ma the materials that that, that we have to, to, to today.